camera. Now that is redneck, is all I'm going to say right now. Better than nothing. Well, it works, it's honey. <laughs> Calling you a redneck anyway. <laughs> he is. You can't help it. They don't give you nothing to give you the right stuff so you can operate with it. Right. I ain't, it ain't my fault I forgot all my stuff at home. <laughs> <laughs>
find a better way. We can go back out to the sanctuary again. Uh, and we can worship and do Bible study out there so we can separate farther apart. Uh, so when this feels too enclosed, you keep, keep your deacons or me informed in that. Uh, and so I uh, just ask you continue to pray. I do want to make the announcement that um, Tracy now has almost her second week under her belt uh, and doing a really good job. I've been really impressed and um, I'm real tickled with what I'm seeing so far. Kim has worked about every day this year. Uh, she was supposed to work the last week that I was gone, but she's actually come back and worked two of the days this week uh, and uh, trying to help train Tracy. And the, the Tracy's catching on really, really quick. Um, the, the, I guess the highlight of my day was that her and I sit down and brainstormed about something that's coming out of the bulletin Sunday. And that is, we're going to ask you to um, update your numbers. Uh, and what we're going to do is basically, I thought about just having a sign-up sheet to have you put down if you change telephone numbers or addresses or something like that, because we're about to do the data, uh, the, the data directory again. That'll be out end of the month of January 1st of February. Uh, Deacons has got some work to do before we can fit, finalize that report. But anyway, to make a long story short, we got to brainstorming it, and she's only worked with Power Church for four days. Uh, and she already showed me some reports off the Power Church that I had never run across. So she knows her way around it, and I'm real tickled um, and, and seeing how fast she's progressing in that. Uh, and I appreciate Kim coming and, and trying to get all these things tied together. There's no way you can train uh, in two weeks, but uh, she can do a really good job and, and hope and pray that um, uh, it will sink in. Uh, but um, uh, Tracy is a, a, a really, uh, has a really good start. Uh, the other thing is that's on a time crunch, and that is the Forever Young Luncheon. Uh, you'll need to plan to sign up this Sunday uh, because it's Two days from that, okay? And Debbie needs to uh, fill out uh, or to reserve some seats if you want to come. It's at Rosebriar, and make sure you see it. It's at 11 o'clock and not at 12. And so it's 11 o'clock. Yeah, at least you can come. Uh, so anyway, um, we'll meet at the Rosebriar. Uh, so sign up this Sunday uh, before you leave. Uh, and, um, and if you forget then call Debbie before she calls Gail uh, and, and, uh, and gets our reservation lined up so they can set the tables up. Any other announcements? All right, here are none. Let's you come and let's sing. I fly away. Turn to page 779 if you'll please stand and sing. I know you love this one, so let's hear it today. Oh, yeah. Turn to page 779.
You can put your books up too. <laughs> You might want to get your prayer list because we've got a whole lot of updates that I need to share with you tonight. Uh, some I added on Sunday and others um, I'm going to add today. Um, number one, don't forget uh, to continue to pray for the Steve Hun Honeycutt family. That's Bob uh, and Elaine Honeycutt's son who passed away. Um, pray for that family there. Also for Pauline's son, Neil Mabry, uh, we have lost a uh, former member of our church. His name is Lloyd Little. Uh, many of you will not know him. He's from Grace Pass, um, a good ways back. And so, uh, but anyway, the family has called me uh, and asked me to do the funeral for him. It's a graveside, uh, and it's going to be held on Monday of next week. But uh, this is a little different. The family will receive friends tomorrow from 2 to 3 at Stanley Funeral Home. I've uh, not seen one spread out that far, but it most likely was scheduling problems. They just can't do but so many funerals in a day. Uh, and it's really, been, it's really been bad. If you've been watching the obituaries online, uh, you see 2 and 3 new ones every day. Uh, it seems like it's just... Um, just about out of control. But, um, but just remember that family. Uh, Lloyd has no children uh, and basically just friends and, fam and a few family. And so uh, uh, he has basically been a caregiver all of his life uh, to his family. And so we're going to try to just preach the gospel uh, and share just a, quick, uh, just a quick service for them on Monday at 2 o'clock at Fairview Cemetery. Uh, but remember, the visitation is tomorrow from 2 to 3 at Stanley Funeral Home. The one we had in the hospital, Eddie Burris, um, Brother Honeycutt texted me today and said he is now off the respirator. And uh, awful good news that he has come off the respirator uh, and is making, according to Daryl, making good strides. Um, and I just ask that you continue to pray uh, for him that he can recover uh, in the days to come. Um, I noticed that uh, Miss Burris is not here. Um, Ruth I'm talking about. Ruth and I have been trying to figure out, we've not been able to get into Far Stokes and check on our ladies there uh, and their line. Um, the, it was the ladies Doris Goodman and, and Norma Wing, uh, Woodring. Uh, well, she found out that uh, Doris passed away in October of last year. And then she found out Norma passed away in November of last year. And I, I even went back and searched every funeral home, and there is no obituary for them. So I don't know if they were buried outside of Stanley County. I don't have connections with all of the nurse, uh, funeral homes, uh, and they usually could have. Um, but I didn't know Doris uh, other than just being Norma's roommate. Uh, and so... Uh, I guess you'd say Ruth was a little shocked because she basically went over there to give a Christmas gift to the family to give to Norma, uh, or she calls her Janice. And they looked at her and said, she's been gone. She, she died back in November. But good, on top of that, believe it or not, Far Stokes has called me and wants me to come in and sing uh, in the near future. I've yet to schedule that, hoping to do that tomorrow. Uh, and work out a, a monthly uh, singing going in there. So that's going to put me up to five nursing homes as long as they stay open. Um, the sad part about it, Spring Arbor called me and said, don't come Friday, uh, we've got another outbreak. And so I figure it's just a, a it's coming that it's going to go through all of them again. So just pray for all of the, the workers as well as uh, the, the patients there in those nursing homes. 
Um, Leisha gets to go on our prayer list. Uh, she is facing surgery, not this Friday, but next Friday. And, um, and just asking that you pray uh, it, that all goes well. One time they were talking about letting her spend the night after the surgery, but now with the COVID ramping up, they're actually talking about sending her home same day. I don't totally agree with it, uh, not for the extensive part of surgery she's going to be having. Uh, and so she's going to be out of commission for a couple of weeks, and we just ask you pray for her. Um, and um, just lift up uh, at the doctors and all of that. Um, Jan Holmes. Jan Holmes found out today that she will be having a repair or replacement of the hip she had replaced last February. Um, something they have found out about the doctor in Salisbury that he's under lawsuits for installing oversized hips in people. And it, it sort of explains why Jan has hurt her ever since her surgery was back in February. And so I was able to go over and see Richard and, and Jane and uh, we had a good time together and I was picking at Richard told him to get off his sorry rear end and let's get at it. And uh, he said, okay. I said, I'll get you a longer cord and you can run all over this house. <laughs> he is on oxygen full time and he needs to be. But, uh, you know, uh, I had a little lady at Fairview. I ain't never seen a cord that long. Uh, her name was Dottie. And Dottie would go and she went until she was standing beside her bed one day and fell over dead and hit the bed. She was dead before she ever hit the bed. And I said, that's exactly the way Dottie would have wanted to go. She was one sweet little lady, but she had COPD so bad that she could barely get a breath. But uh, she did. She had a cord and that thing would wrap around my foot because she's running all over the house. But, um, but anyway, I was picking at Richard, trying to make him smile, and I got him to laughing. And, um, but just pray for them. They're going through a pretty tough time. Um, and I just want you to lift them up uh, to the Lord. Um, Deanna, give us an update on Landon if you've had one lately. Not since, well, they're fitting him with, uh, they did imprints of his feet to get ready for some boots. They want him, he's kind of on walk, but they're wanting to stand eventually, not now. Right. Because they said his feet, his legs are, are weak that he won't be able to hold up. But anyway, they're, they're doing that to fit, you know, for the boots. Uh, very small steps, but each step that they are reassuring the family that they can't go back. He's, he's going forward. Uh, as I said, as soon as they can uh, get him off the of IVs, he'll go to uh, uh, the child, Levine. Yeah, Levine, 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 Levine rehab, yeah. Rehab, and they told him that he would be in the hospital for four months, at least. That's uh, better than a year, wasn't it? Yeah, that's better, and closer home. Uh, Amen. The family appreciates the prayers. They said the prayers are the only thing that are getting them through, and prayers are being answered because uh, y'all just hear a little bit. But it's been a real bad situation. I bet. I mean, we just need to continue to pray and let God handle it, that's for sure. Uh, my wife's not here tonight. You'll probably miss her. She had a little dental procedure today. Uh, when I left her, she was holding an ice pack to the side of her head. So uh, uh, she's not hurting too bad. She'll get all right. Uh, <laughs> I told her to make sure to wash dishes before I got home. Uh, <laughs> but we, we picked good up. We have a good time. But um, And that's really, uh, other than uh, Wanda Stamper, uh, I updated the prayer team. Uh, Wanda is now... Uh, been on about a week and a half to two weeks. Has been on a chemo peel, uh, and they will scan her, uh, you know, in a while to see if it is helping. I know it took mom almost six months before we saw results. 
it didn't grow and she didn't gain any uh, legions on her liver uh, but um, I'm just praying that that Wanda will be able to turn around and that uh, that chemo peel will, will absolutely work. Uh, but I know God does the healing. What about on your heart? Anybody? Yes, Jane. Teacher, I've seen her tonight. She's just having had health problems. And the name again? Deanna. Deanna. She's just having health problems. And I said, would you like for me to put you on the credit? She said, please. Okay. Okay. Yes, okay. Just physical problems or? Physical. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Um, Go ahead, Diane. A friend of mine, uh, that she and I grew up in this church together. Her name is Jane Cooper. She fell the other day and trying to make a, a three-inch step, she said, and she missed it and rolled both of her ankles, broke the left one. <laughs> Oh. and bruised the right one and had surgery on New Year's Day. She said she was the only patient in the hospital in the surgery unit. <laughs> so she had the doctor and the anesthesiologist and a few nurses and that was it. Wow. Uh, but she's still in the hospital recovering. So. I just remember Miss Cooper. I just have a praise report. Um, I took my mother for her check out with her cancer doctor in Chapel Hill today and she's still cancer free. She's been that way for two years now. So. And her name is Teresa Stanford. Really? Wonderful. Good, good, good pressure for Anybody else? I have a question. Straighten me out on the uh, January calendar. The Forever Young meets at Rosebrier on, what is on the 20th that's here at the church? Uh, 20th is for every young event, dumpling lunch, but that's, that's it, changed. That didn't work out, so we That has to be changed. Okay. It was changed. That's where the bulletin outrules the calendar that was done three weeks ago. <laughs> I changed that on my calendar. Very good. If you read your bulletin Sunday, you would have known it. But anyway, here we go. <laughs> Don't tell me you read it. You have a question. Come on, girl. Yeah, I know. Well, yeah, peppermint. Amen. Mark likes my peppermint roll. That was my fault because I didn't get in touch with the preacher in time for him not to put that bulletin out with that. Run the wrong calendar. Yep. That's it. Yeah, that calendar's already. It, best thing to do is is probably come by my office and get a new one. <laughs> I've already changed three other things on it. So. <laughs> I like I like it when God interrupts. You hear me? I'm serious. I, you know, I look at it as, as a divine interruption. And if God didn't want us to do it on that day, praise God, we won't do it on that day. That's the way that's the way He works. And you gotta accept it. Who's next? All right, all hearts clear, minds clear. I just want to ask continue to uh, remember Jeremy. He's doing he's doing okay, but he's still He's still staying in the house. He, has, uh, he was diagnosed with COVID uh, sick three days after Christmas. So all of us in the family had to quarantine. But we're, you know, so far nobody else has, has gotten sick. So, so he's got the COVID that. fatigue now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they tell me that's a real thing. Brother Tom? Yeah, uh, John Day, who's on our list. Yes, uh, we saw him a couple weeks ago. Yeah, a few weeks ago. He's... He's hanging in quite well, you know, continuing on. But his wife has dementia, so she has her up days and her really down days. I and so. so anyway, so but but he is he's, he's hanging in there. Right. Wonderful. Thanks for that update there. A couple of churches we need to remember, uh, just for the struggles that they're having. Um, you know, I talked to Danny. Today, Danny's been sick now for almost a week and um, coughing. Uh, he says that they tell him he's got bronchitis. Uh, and I said, so you tested negative for COVID? He said, yeah, he tested negative. So uh, I, they just, uh, you know, Danny's just down in the dumps because he just feels like nobody wants to do nothing. And, um, and they're very content. So Danny asked us to pray. Uh,
pray that revival will come to his church. You know, we are um, excited about going over there and, uh, with the Singing Americans and, and singing for them at the end of the month. And, and we're getting that all lined up. And we'll be practicing uh, in a week and get ready to go. But, um, but they just, you know, I, I'm afraid that's the mentality of most churches is, you know, oh, well, you know, the COVID started again and it breaks my heart. Uh, that Brenda and I have been talking about street hockey and it's supposed to start up this coming Saturday, not this week, but next week. And I just don't feel comfortable bringing kids back sweating and beating and slamming in each other's face. Um, you know, school's bad enough, but you throw them on a, on a court uh, and they're wrestling after the puck, I, I just don't feel comfortable yet. And plus, I don't think they'll come. And, but we haven't been back together in almost two years now. And I hope and pray, I want you to pray that that ministry doesn't die. Because I don't want it to die. Now, it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of sacrifice. But it's well worth it when you can share the gospel with kids that never hear the gospel. And uh, it's my opportunity to, to, to get into those kids' head. Uh, and hopefully God will touch their hearts. So pray for the street hockey that maybe February and I'm going to send out a phone tree to them and tell them that, you know, just hang on. We're coming back, but the COVID's got to reduce a whole lot before we can, we can get back to playing again and get back to hand-to-hand -hand combat is about what it amounts to. So, um, so we, uh, we'll be announcing that Sunday too, that there'll be no street hockey this coming Saturday. And so... Um, so anyway, that was a little bit of a, a, a bummer. And then uh, pray for my flesh and that it'll stay down. Um, Tommy heard half of it. Uh, but uh, we bought this brand new mega computer. Well, guess what? They put plugs on the back of that thing that I ain't, me and Tommy, neither one has ever seen. And just to get it to hook up to your monitor cost us 40 bucks to get just the right plug to plug into that crazy thing. It is called a display port. It looks like an HDMI, but they messed it up enough where an HDMI won't fit it. I was so mad. And I let this one little old girl, not ugly, but I told her really quick, I don't appreciate what big companies are doing to make more money. They're changing these systems so that they can sell more product. And it just, that's the way of America. And so, uh, pray for all that's going on in our nation, all that's going on in our government. Pray for Kerry. Uh, Ernest uh, could not come this past Saturday or Sunday because she was feeling really bad and didn't want him to leave her. Uh, but uh, just pray for that whole situation. And uh, yes, Vivian Helms was in the bed all day today out with a migraine headache. And I understand this is something that she deals with. But yes. I didn't know that. And I went in, Vivian, 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 and I saw her. Yeah. She was out. Oh, yeah. TV, the dog, me hollering at her. <laughs> no, she medicates pretty strong when that happens okay. because of the pain. Oh, yeah. praise report. Union Chapel United Methodist is going to start Sunday school Sunday. One class. Wow. After all this time, they have had five or six funerals, not COVID. Yep. It's just they've been inundated with deaths. Yep. And they're still plugging on in. Good. I got an email today that they're going to do Sunday school Sunday. Good. Praying for Canton Baptist Church. Uh, they lost their pastor after no more than about four Sundays. And um, that's always devastating. And so, uh, don't know the whole story, hearing bits and pieces, but what I heard was it was a very ugly Sunday. Uh, deacons resigned. Uh, people made accusations, some true, some false. Uh, and people stormed out, never promising never to come back. That's why we had a young couple here, is that they are tired of the fight, and they just wanted a break for one Sunday at least. I don't think Brittany 
and John Michael will come here, uh, but they just needed a break. And her dad and I graduated from high school together. And so that's how we know her, and, and we went to church with her when she was a little girl. But um, that was the reason they just came over for a, a, a haven to just sit and worship. And I, you know, I don't try to steal sheep. Because most time when you steal a sheep, it turns out to be a goat, and I don't, I don't want to deal with it. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you so much that we can trust you in the time of trouble. Father, we can trust you because of who you are and the faithfulness you have shown. Father, help us Sunday as we look at that faithfulness and Father, how you lived up to your word. Father, you brought it to pass. Father, you opened, Father, the path for Jesus to come. <clears throat> Father, you sent your messenger to this earth. Father, that he would clear the way. And oh, how John cleared the way. And how he set the stage for the Messiah to appear. So, Father, help us to prepare our hearts. And, Father, help us to thank you for your faithfulness to Joseph. Father, we have been studying Him and we thank You for how faithful You were, Father, to the Jewish nation. And Father, You protected them even when it looked horrible. Even when it looked like the world was in control. Lord, You were doing something bigger than they could understand. But Father, looking back, it looks clear to us what You were doing. Father, help us to trust You that You will do it in our lives too. Father, it may look horrible. Father, it may look the worst. But Father, we know You're doing something. And oh Lord, we're just going to trust You in it. Father, help us to trust and put our faith in You. And Father, we love You because of the hope that we find in Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, what I thought about doing is, is basically, as I said, it's been two months since we've studied. And we really need to go back and refresh our memory of chapter 45. So take your Bible and turn to Genesis chapter 45. And what I want to do is that we're going to uh, revisit in a quicker pace, uh, which I'm going to have to be quicker. I only have 30 minutes left. But I want to look at the entire chapter uh, of chapter 45. And if you remember where we've come to this point is basically, I called it Joseph Revealed. You know, Joseph has uh, basically become the ruler of Egypt. Uh, he is second in command of Pharaoh. Uh, he is interpreted dreams. And, and all of a sudden, his, boy, his brothers come to get grain during the first year of the famine. And we find that Joseph did something that, unless you had studied this, you would have thought was pretty cruel. That he treated his brothers really ugly. That he basically um, abused his power, is what we would say today. But really, truthfully, when you get down into it and you study it, you'll find out Joseph was testing his brothers. Joseph was sending his brothers through trials and literally, he was scaring them to death. The same thing that God does to us. We, you know, isn't it amazing that, that when people are, uh, are born again and saved, and you think life's going to go and become grand, and everything's going to be just busting up roses, and then it goes to pot. You ever wondered if God's testing us? If God's sending us through a trial to, and He's scaring us to death, have you ever wondered if God's doing that? Well, I know He is. I know He puts our faith to the test. And, and he, he sends us through, as the Old Testament call it, calls it, the refining fire. It was the same thing as taking gold and putting it through the fire. And what surfaced on the top was the ugly was the dirty, and it was skimmed away and thrown away. But the gold remained, and that's what God's doing. And, and that's what Joseph was doing. And then we finally got to the point, 
And it took a, a long time to finally get there, but finally there was triumph. Now, I asked this question the last time, or something there about. What makes you triumph? What makes you celebrate? What makes you happy? And every time I look at this, I literally ask myself that same question. And I'm afraid a lot of it is worldly. It's called worldly success. It's called getting what I deserve. It's finding peace in a troubled time. Well, let me tell you, Joseph was a true man of God, and he was a man that was faithful to God, and when it come to triumph, he praised God the whole time. He never took credit for anything. Well, in the very end of chapter 44, we see Joseph in the final exam. Uh, we, we find out that he uh, Judah comes to him, who is now the spokesman of the brothers, and, and basically this final test was, number one, was there any honor among the thieves? <coughs> Were there any honesty among the cowards? Were there any humility in the proud boys of Jacob? And he found it. And Judah cleared the way. Judah began to, uh, to, to basically show all three of those characteristics to Joseph. And, and finally it came to the point where it was time for Joseph to reveal himself to his brothers. And, and what did he do? He said, boys, look what I've done. Look, look what I have gathered. Look how I have been the Savior to Egypt. No, he praised God and he told his brothers how God sent him there. Not his brothers. Not his circumstances. Not the linemen of the stars. But God sent Joseph to Egypt. And how God made Joseph into the man that he was. Made him into the man that he was. You know, we cannot say that we've made ourselves into who we are or what we have accomplished in life. Listen, God made us. And God put you exactly where you are today. But last but not least, how God preserved. Once again, we're sitting here and looking back some four to 5,000 years ago. Some people say it's four, some people say it's three, some say it's five. It's hard to date when Jacob and his boys lived. But I really don't want to get stuck on the year. I want you to look back at what God has done for the nation of Israel and the Jewish nation and how 2,000, no, 4,000 years ago, He preserved that family. And He did it in a miraculous way. And even to this day, you can walk down the streets of Albemarle and you can meet Jews and shake their hand. God protected and preserved that family. That they can have a vital part in, in our world today. But you know, it reminds me of a whole lot about Christ. How God sent Him. How God sent Him to the earth to do what God sent him to do. And God made him. I, I love studying Jesus. We're about to start through the Gospel of Mark on Sunday. That we're going to start to, to see how God made him the Savior of the world. How, how God designed everything to unfold. You know, really truthfully, it, it's, it's crazy to think that the Roman government would crucify a Jew... It was for the Gentiles. The crosses were designed for, for Gentiles. It wasn't for Jews. But they crucified a bunch. But Jesus, they should have stoned Him according to the Jewish law. That was the way of death. Through the Torah, through all of the Old Testament, stoning was the way of death. How in the world did He ever get on the cross? Because God made Him hang on the cross. 
Last but not least, through Jesus. And that's where you read the New Testament and you should triumph every time you hear or see the phrase in Christ or through Christ. Everything is done through Him. You are preserved. I am preserved. My soul, my spirit, my eternity is preserved in Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. So, that's what God is trying to show us through the life of Joseph. So, if you'll remember what we did, we talked about how Joseph was sent by God and how he triumphed in God. Look at verse, verse 1 of chapter 45. Then, G, then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still alive or live? But his brothers could not answer him. They were dismayed in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near me so that you can. So they came near. Then he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourself because you sold me here. Look what he said. For God sent me before you to preserve life. He didn't blame his brothers. He, he, didn't, he didn't hold grudges against his brothers for putting him in this, this position. He said, God sent me. Verse 6. For, there, for these two years the famine has been in the land and there are still five years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent, second time, and God sent me before you to preserve a, poster, a posterity or a remnant for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. You know, I don't know about what some of us today, but I know what I would have done. I, I, I want to hold grudges against people that have done me wrong in churches in the past. Especially the last one that I resigned. I really want to hold grudges. <coughs> you know, they've already buried them. They're already dead. God took care of it. But I still want, but I can't. You know, I, I can't be mad at them because I believe that God did that to send me here. To send me back to Stanley County. To send me back so Darlene could live with her mom just four years left before she passed. And I can take care of my mom before she passed away. I would have I would have missed everything if I'd have been in Hamlet. I'm thankful to God that He sent me here. And Joseph stood before his brothers in one of the greatest testimonies you'll ever hear. He said, listen, brothers, don't be angry. Don't grieve yourself. He said, you are here. I am here because God sent me. You know, He took Joseph from fear to faith. Joseph was sold into to slavery and he was fearful, but God turned it into faith. But then he did another work, how God sent a forgiving spirit in Joseph's heart. I mean, look at all he missed out. Joseph was 17 years old when he was sold. He was imprisoned. He was treated ugly as a slave. He had a right to be vengeful. But praise the Lord, he didn't. Because God gave him a forgetting heart. And that's something God needs to do in a lot of us. There's one thing to forgive. We've got to let it go. But we, we've got to basically forget it. And every time it rises up, say, no, God, God put me here. It wasn't their fault. It wasn't this. It wasn't that. It was God. Listen, if you believe in a sovereign God, you have to think this way. Amen. The sad part about it is the battle is we don't believe in a sovereign God. 
Now it gets deep, and we're not going to go there tonight. But a sovereign God, there's nothing that takes Him by the surprise, and there is nothing that is out of His control. And you say, well, what about when I sin and go against Him? He believed that too, and believe me, He planned that too. He saw it coming. So friend, there's nothing we can do. So we need to forget it. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to forget it. And I've become such a happier man. Right, Mark? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm picking on Mark because he's in the experience of God you're already having a ball. <laughs> and and his, his buddy beside of him, which we call Grease Monkey, uh, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. <laughs> and he is, he is a really nice guy. <laughs> You see, Joseph triumphed in God and how God sent, but he also triumphed with his brothers about how God made. What God did with Joseph and how God made him. Look at verse 8. So now, it is not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and a lord to all of his house and a ruler throughout all of the land of Egypt. You see, in that one verse, you get my three points. God made him, number one, a father, which literally, you can take it literal as Savior. He was the father of a nation. And we call a lot of people that saved our nation or saved our army or saved this, saved that, we call him the father of this or that. Well, Joseph was a father, and that's what he said. He triumphed that God made him a father. He made him Lord of all. Now, that's the most amazing part, is that Joseph was this little Hebrew boy who didn't have anything when he came to Egypt, and he rose to second in command of the highest power, and they called him Lord. Only God can make that. Uh, you can go to school, you can get your degrees, you can do all this and that and the other. You can fight and you can uh, climb the corporate ladder. But God will make you what He wants you to be. And where He wants you to go. And what He wants you to accomplish. Last thing, Joseph said with his own list, lips at the end of verse 8. He said, and a ruler throughout the land of Egypt. But read on. He tells his brothers, he says, hurry and go up to my father and say to him, this says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and do not tarry. You shall dwell in the land of Goshen and you shall be near to me, you and your children and your children's children, your flocks and your herds and all that you have. There I will provide for you lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty. For there are still five years of famine. And behold, the eyes and the uh, behold your eyes and the eyes of your brother Benjamin. See, it is my mouth that speaks to you. So you shall tell my father of my glory in Egypt and of all that you've seen. And you shall hurry and bring my father down here. Then Joseph fell on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Benjamin wept on his neck. Moreover, he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Now the report of it was heard in the Pharaoh's house saying, Joseph's brothers have come. And it, so it pleased Pharaoh and his servants well. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, Say to your brothers, Do this, load your animals and depart, and go to the land of Canaan. Let me tell you, only God can make that happen. Have you ever seen a, wor seen a worldly government that rejoices over family? Very few. Amen. I I'm telling you, family is a dying thing when it comes to our world. But Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, the, the strongest and, the, and the, the richest man in all the world at that time, rejoiced. And his servants too. 
There was no envy. There was no jealousy. There was no... Only God can make that. Only God can make this story come out this good. And so when you stop and think about it, God is in control and He's brought it all to pass. And so the last point that we made was how God preserved. Now, God has done all of this and He's made all of this happen. Now watch what happens in Joseph's family life. Reading verse 18. Bring your father and your households and come to me. And I will give you the best of the land of Egypt. And you will eat the fat of the land. Now you are commanded, do this. Take carts out of the land of Egypt for your little ones and your wives. And bring your father and come. Also, do not be concerned about your goods. For the best of the land of Egypt is yours. Leave your junk at home, boys! <laughs> We got the palace here. You got anything? You got the pick of the litter. Just get the family and come on. I'll even give you carts. I'll even give you donkeys. I'll even give you provisions. Verse 21. Then the sons of Israel did so, and Joseph gave them carts uh, according to the command of Pharaoh, and he gave them provisions for the journey. He gave to all of them, to each man, changes of, of garments. But Benjamin, his, that's the, the chosen one, he gave 300 pieces of silver and five changes of garments. Well, he got the lick. He got the, he got the whole shoot match. And he sent to his father these things. Ten donkeys loaded with good things of Egypt. Ten female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and food for his father for the journey. He, so he sent his brothers away, and they departed. And he said to them, See that you do not become troubled, troubled along the way. Joseph knew what was in these boys' heart. And they get out on that road, traveling for weeks upon end, in the heat of the desert, your mind goes to wondering and you go to wonder, is Joseph really, is this really this good? Or is he setting us up for, is he going to tell us when we get back? What is he doing? And, and Joseph told him, he said, don't become troubled along the way. And then he went out, uh, up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan of Jacob, their father, and they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive, and he is governor over all the land of, of Egypt. And Jacob's heart stood still, because he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words which Joseph had said to them, and when they saw the carts which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, I love that word, revived. Then Israel said, it is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive. I will go and see him before I die. God preserved. He preserved the family. He, 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 number one, he, he, he preserved their finances. He gave them enough to travel to and from. And, and, and when, he, when he told them, he said, leave your junk at home. We, you got the pick of the land here. He said, you got anything in this in this land is yours. Let me tell you something. God blessed and He made those boys rich. He basically preserved their family for life on this earth. He preserved their family by number one providing the financial support, but also bringing them back together. For the first time, this family can tell the truth and not have to tell a lie. And, and I could just see the joy on Jacob's face, knowing that his boy, that he had mourned for some 20-some years, is still alive. I can only imagine. I love to watch these programs that show soldiers coming home after a year or two of deployment, and the family and how they elate when they walk in the room. And the tricks that they play on some of the kids, I just absolutely love it. Uh, I just love watching the expression 
Can you imagine after 20 years not even thinking that your son was alive? He comes home. God preserved his family. He preserved them financially, but lastly, he preserved their future. Now, we have to look a little bit ahead of the story to understand this. We know Jacob's about to die. We know that the story <coughs> will come to an end. But we know the rest of the story, don't we? We know the story of how for the next 400 years they're going to be in the land of Egypt. They're stuck there. But hey, we're not going to get there yet. We're going to continue to triumph. We're going to continue to praise God because of all that He's done and all that... I guess you could say we need to tell the rest of the story. And, and, and God just, input, uh, just impressed on my heart this title. And, and I pretty much laid out the rest of our study of the book. And you've got it on your sheet. Number one, chapter 46 is about the future. Chapter 47 is a, about the famine. we still got five years. And, and it's amazing what Joseph did and, and how rich Egypt became. You know, we miss that sometimes, but Egypt became tremendously rich. They practically bought up the whole world, the known world. But then we're going to deal with family. The end of the story, this family will be talked to by Jacob and he will basically talk to each one and say his goodbyes. And then we say goodbye to Jacob, the father the patriarch, the absolute patriarch of the family. He will close his eyes. But you know what God told him that he would? God told him, he said, Joseph will close your eyes in death. But last but not least, the story can end until we watch Joseph die. That's where it ends. Is that where we end? Well, God's been impressing on me. I've never done this before, but basically we, we can't do but one, one other thing. We've got to end the story. And until you get to the book of Exodus, you don't hear the end of what we've been studying for the last year. You, you don't understand the way everything... Well, you don't understand that 400 and, uh, of years of... or 450 or 460 you know, years of of slavery that the children of Israel went through. Now how long has America been here? We'll see how many history buffs we have. It's over 320 years, right? 320, 330? Don't worry. It don't matter. Y'all can't do math either. <laughs> We're still talking another 100 years. The length of America has been here that the children of Israel was under captivity. So, we got to read the next book. we got to study the next book. And it's called Exodus. And basically, it's just the end and the rest of the story. It's the end of how they finally wound up in the Promised Land. Now, sad part about it is, I don't think we're going to go through Joshua. I don't know, we might, but that's the next story. That's when Joshua takes the reins from Moses and goes into the promised land. It's really neat how the Old Testament is. I'm going to have to speed up or I'm going to be 90 years old till we get done. <laughs> I will be the age of what I look right now, okay? But thank you. I've enjoyed this study and I'm going to enjoy finishing it. But we had to go back and relive what had happened with Joseph. So that next Wednesday night when we come, we're going to actually watch Jacob come to Egypt. And we're going to see that great reunion and the beginning of the future of a family living in a small place called Goshen. And how they're going to start from there and build millions of lives. And then God's going to come get them. So thank you. Pray for each other. 
Y'all be safe with the COVID. If you have it, stay home. Take care of yourself. And uh, I know my brother-in-law has it right now. It's going through his family. Him and his sons got it. Uh, he felt really bad through the weekend, and now he's feeling a whole lot better, but he just tested positive. So it's everywhere, okay? So just pray for one another that we'll be strong through this fight. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful time of study. And Father, I thank you for the many that come. And I thank you for, Father, just being family and seeing how you work and how you will work all things out. Father, for your glory and also for our good, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.